Hey crafty friends, this is Jenny from crafttestummies.com and today I have a little kind of um, paint along tutorial for you. These are just some cards that I made for Father's Day and I kind of used this tree of life idea and watercolors and you can see some sparkly paints and um, I had a couple of inquiries and I wanted to show you how I made them. So let's take a look. Okay, I'm just using basic watercolor supplies. For this particular project, I'm using my da Jane Davenport um, palette. I don't remember if it has another fancy name, but I liked it because it had nice bright colors and um, kind of more of a primary bent, which is what I was going for. I'm also going to use a mica-based watercolor product. These are the Ganzai Tambi Starry Night set, I think. Um, I also really like the Ulta New set, but I'm just going to be using a little bit of this mica kind of to set it off. Now, this isn't 100% watercolor. Um, I'm also using a rubber stamp. And oh, here you go, now you can see it. So I'm using these from Rubber Stamp Tapestry, and these were designed by Lindsay the Frugal Crafter. And I'm actually using kind of this oak tree down here at the bottom. Um, notice none of them have roots. Um, so by the way, I would probably not do this one because it has some kind of like a, you know, a landscape uh, bent to it. I just want something that has a nice terminus so that when I double stamp it, um, it looks like roots underneath the ground. So this is the one I'm gonna be using. But you know, if you have sets from Stampin' Up or somebody, you know, it, it's just kind of whatever you can find. Just find a nice tree that is in proportion to the piece that you're making. This is going to be a card. All right, oh, and you're also gonna need um, a nice, dark black stamp pad, and of course like your paintbrushes and whatnot. So the only preparation that I did is taped a piece of watercolor paper, and this is just from a like a cheap Canson pad, um, down to a wooden clipboard. And I do that because, yeah, it has a tendency to warp, and I don't uh, really want it to do that. So I just use some washi paper to hold it down. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just like make a parameter of how big I want my finished thing to be. This is gonna be really hard for you to see, but what it'll do too though is help um, me see where the edges are. You could always use a little bit of a pencil. It'll help also everything flow when the time comes. Now also notice this is the kind of product where I like to move the whole board um, and not try and like move my arms around in funky ways. Um, just because I think that's better for you ergonomically and you get a nicer edge. So I just kind of watered in my basic school oval shape and now I'm going to add a little bit of the white sparkle just right in the middle. And I found that if I add the white color, it's white, I don't know what it's even called on this thing because they're all mixed up. But if I add a little bit of white sparkle in the middle, it really makes my, my whole thing glow. And now I'm gonna go in with my color and you can choose a green for this or a blue depending on what you want your project to be. Um, I really kind of got into this blue color, literally and figuratively, and I'm just gonna go around the edge of where I kind of drew my line before. And I'm just laying down the color really thickly. I also have been told I don't use watercolors the way they're supposed to be used, and I'm okay with that. I just like it when they all kind of smudge together. So now we've got kind of our thick outline there. And then my initial one was green and I kind of was feeling this geode action. So I'm just gonna go over here and smooth out the edges and kind of blend it in. I can add a little more water, but I'm not gonna do too much because now I'm gonna go back in with, um, I like whatever this color is. It's like kind of a red gold, I suppose. And I'm just gonna add a line in between them, like so. And just kind of span those two worlds. Let me rotate. Have to span the two worlds, like so. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna rinse the brush and now I'm gonna blend this inner edge 
a little bit. And now I'm gonna blend the outer edge a little bit. By the way, you notice I have a steel tumbler and it kind of dings at me every time I rinse my brush. I like that. So that's kind of the first layer. And then I'm gonna want this to um, just dry a little bit. If I don't like the little lines bleeding out there at the edge, I can just draw back over it with my brush and add a little more. Round it out if I want. But I like the fact that it's a little, little asymmetrical, little wob wonky. Um, so I'm gonna go hit this with the heat gun and I'll be right back. All right, so the next step is to go ahead and use your stamp. And we're going to stamp kind of just a little over halfway in the middle, a little in the kind of top quadrant here. You really only get one chance to do this unless you transfer everything to a stamping platform, which I kind of didn't want to do. So, and then what I do is I just kind of mask off that last bit and I add, without adding any more ink, a shadow stamp to the bottom. And that gives me my roots, and I'll show you a close-up of that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is add um, my horizon line, and I'm actually gonna add a different color for that. Uh, I kinda like using this sapia brown tone, and I mix it with a little bit of the blue. So I can actually just take this brown, and this blue, 